What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denarik Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Geography Now Mozambique this time. Okay, so for the first time, I didn't realize that I wasn't recording, and I was already a few minutes in the video. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like pretend this is all just new information to me. Oh man, Mozambique. Totally didn't know it was a, like a Lusophone nation. That's brand new information to me. So... Got him. Well, whatever, whatever. It was only like uh, it was only like three minutes in, anyway. So uh, nothing, nothing too, too shabby was going on. So uh, let's just let's just get into it. Group, it would look kind of like this. Guys, guys, guys. Estoy entediado. Yo voy a salir con mis otros amigos Tanzania, África del Sur, and I'm I'm gonna start speaking English now. Join <laughs> us. Oh man, that was funny when I first saw it. No, this is the first time I first saw it. Everybody, I'm your host Barb's. Welcome to Africa's Portuguese-speaking, one-time allied with communist part of the Commonwealth, no. even though they were never under the British country. Oh, and they're the I didn't know that. All five vowels in their name. Off to a Whoa. great start. Let's jump into the globe now, shall we? That is cool. Brand when new it information. Africa, location matters, and with Mozambique, it's a pretty sweet deal. The only issue is historically things got a little weird, and they had to kind of adapt to like a billion different changes. First of all, the country lies in Southeast Africa, bordered by six other countries. Don't forget little Eswatini and the Indian Ocean. Whoa! As their coast I totally east, didn't know him. Away from the Comoros Islands, Mayotte, and Madagascar, the country is divided into ten provinces. The capital Maputo, located in the south, encapsulated by the separate Maputo province. Don't get the two confused. The city also has the country largest and only international airport Maputo International after Maputo oh god look at look at what's around it it was like everybody all people's houses wow oh boy Africa has some uh, re Africa has a lot of urban planning to do if it wants to achieve you know greater heights that you know wealthy European nations and uh, you know America whatever other rich nations have so like this is not going to cut it Puto's general metropolitan area, the next largest cities are Nampula and Beira along the coast. However, along the coast, you have the three powerhouse cities that control most of the trade sector with the largest seaports and railway hubs, Maputo, Beira, and Nakala. Unfortunately, the railways only go inland and do not connect to each other, so cross-country rail travel isn't available yet. The country has three main island archipelagos off its coast, the Kirimbas in the north, the Primeras and Segundas a little further south, and the largest one, Bazaruto, a little more south. However, this little guy, the island of Mozambique is kind of like the most important piece to the puzzle as it was pretty much the hub that started the country. It was first inhabited by Swahilis, Minas Sultan, whose name is where the country gets its name What's from. And finally, the Portuguese came in and took over. They built a naval base and a church made of coral known as the... Okay, so I did mention this when I was recording, but uh, but I did not know beforehand that you can actually make stuff out of coral. That actually... Like, I would have never looked at that and say that was made out of coral. So, out of coral it's like from minecraft i only knew coral from like minecraft i didn't know you can actually uh build from coral like in minecraft is what i'm trying to say so that that's brand new information to me and also that's pretty bad for the um environment i think just taking out coral and using it instead of just using concrete or something you use coral and say so just keep it keep it in the reefs don't don't use our national resources again what might do to tell them but seriously try to preserve as much uh as much nature as you can i'm a very green person <laughs> the oldest European building in the Southern Hemisphere. And speaking of cool places, some notable ones that you might want to check out if you ever visit might include the Heroes Square, the Benguera Lodge with lots of cool snorkeling, the historic buildings of Inhamane, I know about Pemba. the Hotel of Beira, the statues of Samora Michael in Maputo, North the Korea. Lion House, the Maputo Natural History Museum, and there are so many churches and cathedrals like these, too many amazing beaches and diving spots. Tofo Beach and Ponta do Oro are kind of like the most popular ones. However, many Mozambicans I know about Pemba. said that Pemba in the north. Is Whoa, kind of like the how did I know that? <laughs> that the locals like to fly to okay. Visit. Very few outsiders know about it. So now We're almost at the point I was. Like Bob Saget completely destroy what was intended to portray as an innocent, wholesome image. Nah, I, I don't know much about Bob Saget like still. The best hidden beach country that nobody really knows about. Nature here really knows how to stand out. So I don't understand the jokes. <laughs> It's probably like a comedian actor now, or whatever. Now, in the Djibouti episode, we talked about how the East African Rift starts... Okay, brace yourselves. Here comes the, the most epic um, uh, joke of all time. We've covered countries along the fault line, and now we get to Mozambique, the end of the crack. 
that started in Djibouti. Oh, <laughs> that is hilarious. First of all, Mozambique essentially lies right where the African plate meets the Somali plate, which is more like a dangling shard that is still connected to the African plate. This is where the East African rift starts and ends. The tectonic ridge cuts through the land and ends roughly around the middle part of Mozambique. The country is generally flat along the coast with mangroves along the shallow oceanic shelf that provides few natural harbors. The inland north and west have the highest mountains, including the highest peak, Mount Binga, shared with Zimbabwe. Technically, the largest lake is Lake Malawi, shared with Malawi, obviously. However, if you don't consider shared lakes, the Kaorabasa Reservoir is the largest inland body of water. It is the fourth largest artificial lake in all of Africa, created by the Kaorabasa Dam, which powers about 80% of the country. On the longest God river, damn. the Zambezi. Is it navigable? Speaking of mighty, it's time for my I think it is. Break, which means yes. Noah steps into the ring and tackles well, the rest Zambique of the Mozambique is awesome now. <laughs> Disappear. Ecologically speaking, Mozambique is rich in biodiversity. Over 230 species of mammals and 740 species of birds can be found in the country. These range from the Big Five to the lesser known Niala antelope and Ardwolf, and the national animal, the African elephant. No surprise, half of the countries in Africa either claim the elephant or lion. And outside Africa, too. For some reason, yes. Unfortunately, poaching has become. There were lions, uh present in in Europe at some point, but uh, obviously our ancestors hunted them to basically extinction, especially around like the southern parts of uh, of Europe, around Greece and uh, like other parts of the Balkans. It was there were actually lions. So technically, yes, and and but the only places you're gonna find lions anymore is in Africa. But something tells me they're gonna be hunted to extinction as well. They're not the king of the jungles. As many people think, well, they they technically live on savannas, but we are the kings, <laughs> technically. A strange uh, primate species that knows how to create nuclear weapons. In your fa who's king of the jungle now, <laughs> lions? Okay. I burned, I roasted lions enough. The largest protected area, the Nyasa Nature Reserve, divided into six hunting blocks, is poorly developed and maintained, which only adds to the problem. Otherwise, economically speaking, Mozambique has had to change a lot of things after independence and subsequent civil wars. The country fell into an intense downward spiral due to mismanagement and is just now starting to pick themselves up with new strategic reforms. Things like changing about 1,200 state-owned enterprises over to privatization and introducing a value added I always say privatization is on top of that sometimes good was greatly reduced through forgiveness and reschedule other times privatization can be you know very corrupt and instead of actually you know the the private firm actually you know starting uh starting up again starting production again they just like sell all their machine they like buy the company for like one this is true for Bosnia they bought the company for like one mark which is like half a euro then they sold all the because they have they're good friends with this politician guy. They sold all the like machines. They split the money, and the guy that sold all the machines machinery uh, fle flees to like Switzerland or Austria or something. Lives the rest of his life in wealth, and leaves the company in ruin. And yeah, that's kind of what happened with privatization in Bosnia in the early days. Today it's a little bit different, but in the early days, oh god, it was corrupt as fuck. <laughs> Under the IMS heavily indebted poor country. Just uh, just a warning for all all you out there that are in countries where privatization is currently taking place. Watch out for that. Initiative. Nonetheless, even though they have one of the world's highest annual GDP growths, they still rank as one of the world's most underdeveloped nations. But if it's one of the world's highest annual growths, that means things are looking up for them though, right? Yes, but it takes time because you know the ramifications of civil war kind of leave their mark. Subsistence agriculture and fishing is still vital to the lives of most citizens and makes up about 80% of the workforce. Most exports include things like aluminum, lumber, cotton, bronze, and sugar. Oh, and a gas and oil reserve that has been discovered which helps out too and to boost revenue though they've developed america wants to know your location low volume Focus because they're bad at geography so they need to know your to location the coast of mozambique most beach resorts are quite lavish and ornate the anatara bazarutu island resort charges nearly a thousand dollars per night it is i'll give you nice 100 <laughs> so i mean yeah for two hours <laughs> sometime otherwise food 
In Mozambique, it's interesting because in some places, especially in the largest cities, you see remnants of the Portuguese and Arab influence. Some dishes you guys prawns. Mozambican jogger peeps suggestively mention include things like a lot of these matata, African foods colored greens cooked in various ways. Gaina are similar. Zambeziana, Very starchy is most commonly eaten and fish. fish. And of course, the staple found with multiple See what I mean, starchy? Cuisine is just one of the amazing facets of culture. So much more to cover them. But that means we now head over to... Demographic. Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Of course. All right, you, you could... I do follow him. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Now, Mozambique is strange because it's kind of like... How can I put this? Politically fluid? It's like, hey, let's try a one-party state-run socialist system, and even though we're not British colonized, let's identify as a commonwealth. Okay, stepping on social issue, analogous thin ice here. Agreed. Let's move on. First of all, the country has about 30 million people, and about half of the population is under 15. The vast majority of the population, at about 99%, falls under the broader Bantu African people group, the largest groups being the Makua, Songa, Lomwe, and Sena, whereas the remainder are mostly made up of Europeans, mostly Portuguese, and a few Indians in China. Chinese. Each of the main Bantu groups mentioned kind of has their own pocket of Mozambique. For example, the largest group, the Makua, mostly live in the north, and the Swahili live along the north coast. The Shona Karanga can be found around the Zambezi Valley. The Songa and Nuni peoples inhabit most of the south. Other small pockets of other people groups are sprinkled in the mix, and there you go, Mozambique pizza. They use wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Le let's get back. Come on. Habit most of the south other small wanted to make a joke other people groups are sprinkled in the mix and there you go <laughs> so who would who lives here nobody lives here can i claim that for my oh also nobody lives here so can i claim that for myself or probably somebody else lives here or it's a national park or something but or there was just there were just too lazy Mozambique to animate pizza. that in they use the Mozambique Metical as their currency they use the types c and f and m plug outlet this this plug outlet for me is like the weirdest it reminds me of that new I iphone with the you know like the three cameras and like the three eyes it's freaky. I don't like it. But uh, in Bosnia, we use this one and this one. I think that's true for the rest of the Balkans. These two. And they drive in case you want to on the left visit. side of the road. I mean, think about it. Literally everyone around them does. So, yeah. Which brings us to our next part, the Mozambican people. What is it like to be one? Well, first off, it's interesting because it's kind of like the most isolated Portuguese speaking country. <coughs> Second most. I mean, Angola <laughs> has easier access to the other guys along the Atlantic, but Mozambique is like on the other side of the continent, on the Indian Ocean, surrounded by English speakers. It's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> you see this meme? <laughs> wait, hey, hey, hey. Wait, what, 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 wait, what's so funny? What's so funny? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 you get it? Oh, I hope, uh, I hope Brazil doesn't see this. <laughs> oh, he won't know, cause you're one of us. One of us. You hear that, Mozambique? One of us. And that's kind of <laughs> how they became a commonwealth in 1995. Over the years, they pretty much kind of had to adapt to their surroundings. I mean, at one point, Portugal wanted to connect Angola and Mozambique in the middle, but then it was like... So, yeah, I'm going to take all the land in between Angola and Mozambique. Uh, no, are you kidding me? My army's bigger. Okay, then. And that's <laughs> Okay, never mind. But uh, seriously, uh, the British and the Portuguese have the oldest treaty of all time. Treaty of Friendship or Alliance of all time. The oldest alliance, that's the point that I'm looking for. It's like nearly 700 years old, I believe. So uh, get on them. I don't think they ever really went to war against each other. So yeah, Portugal has always been like, ever since its creation after the Reconquista, I don't think Portugal has really changed its uh, European um, uh, holdings at all. Even with like, the, uh, there was a brief moment when the Spanish like took over during the Iberian League or by Iberian something <laughs> something iberian but uh other than that i think portugal is like the only one that really didn't change its borders at all so for a european country that is good probably because it's the, like the most isolated out of all the european countries well iceland but uh but still uh, on the european mainland probably the most isolated would be portugal so. Zambia was born. We'll to talk more about Portugal. Portuguese is the only official language when we get to used in government and media. However, it's mostly used as a second language after their various Bantu mother tongues. And of course, they have their own distinct way of speaking it. Here's one of our own Mozambican geographies explaining. Hi, my name is Adonai, and I'm from Mozambique. The native Portuguese. You have a very say, American vou, accent. I'll begin well most. In the Mozambican Portuguese, we say, Eu vou matabichar. Hey, uh, my name is hey, Bicycle. <laughs> Portugal, you'd say Bicicleta. Mozambique, you'd say Jinga, Backpack. Portugal, you'd say Mochila or Mala. In Mozambique, you'd say Pasta. 
pa uh, pasta. <laughs> paste, and uh, probably the most typical Indian word uh, is maningi, which is um, basically a way to say very. One common use of the word is uh, maningi nice, uh, nice being nice from, from English. Faith-wise, over half of the population is Christian at around 56%, mostly Catholic and Protestant. About 18% are Muslim. Culturally speaking, again, it depends on which people group you are interacting with. They all kind of have their own customs and traditions. However, a few universal things you'll notice are the Portuguese and Arab remnants from the past. Prior to Portuguese colonization, Arabs had set up port towns along the coast, mostly for the Arab slave trade along the Indian Ocean. But even before that, tribal colonies and societies had already been established. This guy, the leader of the Gaza Empire in southern Mozambique, was actually the nephew of Shaka Zulu. The Kapulana is a very His name is garment giving me women. anxiety. It has many uses. You can like cover your head or hold storage or carry babies. The largest group, the Makua, are known for having interesting ebony family tree carvings that depict lineage in visual form. Dance is huge, of course. The Makua also have a stilt dance with colorful masks. The Chopi people have a very special hunting dance that reenacts battles. The women on Mozambique Island have a quick rope jumping dance. Gule Wamkulu from the Chewa people is classified by UNESCO as a masterpiece of oral and intangible heritage of humanity and this is just about the time where we talk about history in the quickest way I can put it San hunters and gatherers Bantu migration Arab and Indian exploration Arab Sultan and slave trade era Vasco da Gama stops by he's like I want in on this Portuguese colonization for centuries administration kind of falls into the hands of large private companies the fight for independence independence in 1975 a new USSR communist allied socialist party called Free Limo takes over the National Resistance Party comes in civil war years civil war ends in the 90s new era of democracy they join the commonwealth of nations terrorist attacks in the northern provinces foreign aid trouble 2015 the country is declared to be landmine free economy steadily grows and here we are today. bosnia some wants to know your location descent or from because <laughs> we have a lot of landmines samora makel joaquim chisano mr bow liloka or mr Bo. diogo aka daigo boy maria motola Paulina Chisiana, looks very will i am Chumica, grandma ricardo pinto Jorge, Lisa James, Gonzalo Mambunda, and Abel Javier. Ooh, All right, nice that's hair. just about <laughs> it. Enough on Mozambique. Let's talk about their affiliates now, shall we? Now, because of their unique location on the Indian Ocean, Mozambique has kind of had to adopt different diplomatic measures than the rest of their Lusophone cousins. Oh, and if you're new to this channel, Lusophone means Portuguese speaking. First of all, outside of Africa, the U.S. and China have been heavily investing into the country. The U.S. taking over much of the medical issues, mostly protecting... Oh, good, you didn't use the Portuguese States, flag. China funds many of the or infrastructure projects Swiss like flag. the Maputo Bridge. After South Africa, though, Italy actually is their largest export partner and does amazing business Why Italy? in terms of trade. Mozambique loves Brazilian TV shows and movies. Movies. Angola is their closest Lusophone African friend. They just signed an agreement that allows visa-free travel between the two. I asked a lot of you guys, the Mozambican geography peeps, though, and many of you have said that the best friends are probably South Africa and, to a lesser extent, maybe Portugal. Despite the colonial past, Portugal keeps close ties, not just as a Lusophone friend, but in business, too. Today, they are the second largest private investor in the country. They canceled nearly $400 million in debt back in 2008, and they signed a $124 million fund towards the energy sector. South Africa's relationship, markets, and business play a huge role in the lifeblood that keeps Mozambique afloat. About a third of all exports go to them, and a quarter of all imports come from them. Historically, they supported the resistance party during civil war times. Many Mozambicans move across the border to find work and education opportunities. They share many of the same tribes and people groups. Their former first lady even married Nelson Mandela. In conclusion, Mozambique is beautiful, but it's kind of like a political lusophone anomaly that got stuck in the English world, but they kind of like it. Stay tuned. Myanmar is coming up next. That's not at all controversial, Myanmar. Myanmar, Burma, whatever you like to call it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's going to be a good one. Oh, sorry. Gotta... That's going to be, uh, as you know, the Rohingyas. But I will get to it, whatever. But first, hey, let's just flag slash fan get the flag out of the way. Zombie episode. So as you know, this is the part where I yeah, talk pretty about good. the things that didn't quite make it into the video or the mistakes I made. First of all, at this timestamp, I accidentally used the Zimbabwe flag instead of Mozambique. Sorry, but I mean, in my defense, they do kind of follow the same configuration with the triangle and the colors. And ah, that's it's all right. Confusing. One thing I should have added, and a lot of you people mentioned this, in the famous people section, I could have mentioned Eusebio, this guy. He's like one of the most famous football soccer players of all time. 
time. I don't know. I just kind of follow what you guys Did he play for Mozambique or Portugal? Mozambique and geography mentioned that guy in your list, so... You're Probably fine. some Portuguese. Now, they do share Lake Malawi, but they actually call it Lake Nyasa. And speaking of which, uh, we did mention the Nyasa Nature Reserve. However, I didn't talk too much about it. It actually has some really cool-looking landscape with these rocky mountains and cliffs. I didn't hit on one of the bad things that Mozambique is one of the most heavily hit HIV-infected countries in the world. I think it's at, like, number eight. And finally, I didn't really get to talk too much about the Civil War. Basically, it was fought between the Marxist-Leninist Free Limo Party versus the Resistance Renamo Party. Also, like Zimbabwe and South Africa got involved in that kind of expedited the process. But the weird question is, how did Free Limo become a communist allied party? We kind of explained this in the Angola episode, but in a nutshell, during Cold War years, pretty much the entire world either allied with the Western Allies or the USSR. Right after independence, the USSR... Uh, there was actually a third option, you be, uh, your own thing. The third world. It was like the first world was like... Uh, the ally second world were yeah the soviets and the communist allies in the third world where actually uh, yugoslavia was one of the uh, starters of the third world or the un unallied nations uh, it was like ghana i believe as well and i think india was in there and they all started like uh, the unallied nations so there were there was a third option just kind of jumped in on Angola and Mozambique. And in short, that's kind of why their flags kind of imitate the hammer and sickle image. But yeah, that's just about it. I'm pretty sure there's other things I could have mentioned, but uh, yeah, if you know anything, leave it in the comments. In the meantime, we got to move on. So without further ado... <laughs> Mozambique, quite unique. Let's go seek information on the flag. The flag is made up of three totally nails it at the and end. little white Good job, Paul. lines dividing them with a red triangle on the left hoist side. Hey, it's Vietnam. On it. The green stands for the riches of the land and agriculture. The black represents the African continent and people. The yellow symbolizes the country's minerals. Usually does. The white line signifies Usually peace. does. In the red triangle lies four images. A bayoneted AK-47 assault rifle That's which stands metal. for the defense <laughs> and vigilance of the country. By the way, this makes Mozambique one of the only three countries to have a firearm. Like there's a hoe and a book. With an AK Otherwise, the gardening hoe crossing the AK-47 represents the country's agriculture. The open book stands for the importance of education, whereas the star symbolizes the Marxist ideology and international. Roll credits. Oh Come yeah, on. and the red on the flag <laughs> stands for the struggle for independence, which and... could also stand for. Where's the cool animation? T-shirts now available at geographynow.com. Keep in mind, prior to this flag, they had quite a few other flags in the past. For one month, they used this one. For eight years, they used this no, one. No, not that one. <laughs> one year after independence, they used this one. That which one's is basically good. the same as the current one, except minus the emblem. And prior to that, they were under the Portuguese as Portuguese Mozambique and Portuguese East Africa. And that brings us to the national emblem. The national emblem is the Looks exact very same communist. image as the one on the flag, but with a few extra pieces. The book, gun, and hoe lie on a map of Mozambique on the Indian Ocean, placed ahead a red sun symbolizing the building of a new life all contained within a cogwheel representing labor and industry on the sides lie a stalk of corn and sugarcane prominent crops of the country that stand for agricultural wealth on top of everything lies the red star symbolizing the spirit of international solidarity and finally at the bottom in portuguese reads the republic of mozambique and of course just like the flag they had some previous emblems that they used before as well under the portuguese they used this which had the iconic portuguese five escutcheon symbol on it it's kind of like the iconic it looks like a domino. <laughs> and prior to that, they had the... Or like a fight, or, or like a dice. Yeah, man, a flag with a gun on it. A bayoneted AK-47. That's just... No other flag has That's it. just metal. Alright, so that's fuck. just about it. Now you know what that means. It's time for... The end of the video. So, I would like to thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.